you know, when you're driving out to a place like this, you can see land for miles and miles and miles, absolutely forever. If you look around, there's not the greatest soil out here, so I have to kind of work to make my own. I've lived in this van for over two years and I've, and I've loved it. 50 miles to the nearest town and something goes wrong. Well, I gotta take care of that. That's what I drink every day. It's probably better than the water that you have in the city. The government's gonna come kill me, bro, for telling people. Like, do you know how many people have actually moved out here because of me, dude? It's crazy. So yeah, this is just earth. I just dug down six feet. I know I'm capable of doing this with a shovel, so I did it. It's frugal off-grid, right? <laughs> My name's John, and I live off-grid in the high desert. Guess we can start over here. Hey, hey, relax. Come here. First thing in the morning, I get up and uh, feed the animals and whatnot, kind of check out the homestead make sure things are doing okay. You guys are hungry, I can see it. There you go. Hey buddy. You wanna say hi Nugget? This is Nugget. <laughs> He's a Rhode Island red rooster. He's a big guy. We could see if there's some eggs in here possibly. Oh yeah, guys, watch, look at all these eggs. Hey, watch out, Stapes. Careful, buddy. So there's, let's see, here's two eggs. There's five, six, seven, eight, and then this other mama. Watch out, let's see if you got any eggs for us. No, nope, you're just chilling. So there's, uh, there's eight eggs in here right now we could grab and throw them inside. I had $6,000 to my name. I had a van, a trailer, and, and then I picked up two water tanks. And that's all I came out here with. You guys want an egg? Want some eggs? I get a lot of eggs, actually. These never get old. You know, when you get eggs, when you buy them at the store, they're about two weeks old before they even show up on the shelf. And a lot of people keep them in the fridge for another month, but... You know, I'm getting almost a dozen every day, so this is like a week's worth of eggs, you know? And I'll just grab the oldest ones and feed some to the pigs and dogs and keep circulating them like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, there was a group of guys that came out here a few months after I did, and they were set up. They had generators and RVs and a bunch of manly men, and they gave up after like two months. So it's not about being a manly man, I, I don't think necessarily. If you're passionate about this and you're happy with this, then it'll probably work for you if you put enough effort into it. It's actually extremely simple to make one of these. So this is basically like a Berkey water filter, only it's just two simple buckets. Um, this is a food grade bucket. I'd recommend getting another one, but I just don't have one for now. And then on the front side here, it's, there's just a spigot. It's just got a little bulkhead. I put a hole in there and screwed it in. And then in the top here, there's a few different layers. There's probably six or eight inches of pea gravel. And then below the pea gravel is sand. And then I actually did more gravel and then a layer of activated charcoal. So I'll grab some water from here that was harvested from the roof. It's just rainwater. I'll pour it through here and it'll filter through the, the pea gravel and it'll grab any large items, you know, hair or, or chunks of dust and dirt and stuff like that. The sand will get finer things and then the activated charcoal can actually remove things like bacteria and, and um, contaminants. So that's what I drink every day. It's probably better than the water that you have in the city. I've learned that it works well for me to be frugal. You know, and I grew up really poor, like myself. I just got used to it, living a certain way, and I guess I like it now. I thrive on it almost. I was out here for about six months, uh, sponge bathing and whatnot, which was, you know, kind of roughing it. And I finally decided, hey, I'm gonna set up a shower. So I'm able to pump water from the IBC tote that's rain harvested water. It runs into a propane heater and then I, I have endless hot water in there. And you know, I don't ever shower more than a few minutes because I don't want to waste a lot of water, but it never gets cold though. 
for the most part, life out here has been a lot more calm. I got more time to think and I just find so much more happiness out here. If you look close enough in here, there's several garlic. I started in October and then there's another bunch of them back here. It's kind of a mess, but it works for a barn and, and for starting all the plants and whatnot. Pretty wild to think that just a few hundred years ago, people were coming out. There wasn't technology. They didn't have internet. They didn't have phones. So probably the first week when I came out here, I started digging this hole, this area for the greenhouse. The back end needs to come down a little lower because this slopes a little bit. So by digging down deep enough, I went down six feet with a $4 shovel and I put in 200 linear feet of pipe. There's about three feet of dirt on top of it right now. I put an inline 12 volt uh, fan inside of the tubing. So it's pulling the hottest air from the very top of the greenhouse, pumping it down through 200 feet. And then, and then it comes back out in the middle. So just to get things tested, this isn't how it'll be but I brought over one of my 100 watt solar panels and I just hardwired it in directly into the to the fan that's inside and you can hear it running right now probably and if I if I get in the way it'll shut down for now um, but once I get a battery set up on there then we won't have that problem the power will be there and then even at night it can sit there and pump air which will at night it'll actually work to um, warm it up because where I'm at it's you know last night was 30 degrees and it's going to be over 70 today so I've got to kind of regulate it constantly. I've set up an irrigation system and it's running to 32, 32 pots so I'll, I'll, I think I'm going to start four different items in each corner to see where things grow the best. So this is all dirt that, that I've shoveled out you know it actually has a few benefits because if it was to ever flood at all, there's no chance. People always ask me like, oh, what if it floods in there? It's just not even possible because the water would have to get three feet above the ground. And I don't know if you could imagine, but three feet going out for a long ways, guys, it, it just would never happen. I've never showed up late. I always do more than I have to do. And so if you're that guy, you never fully get paid for that. You're actually feeding all these other guys' families because you're carrying all their weight. And so in a situation like this, it's great being that guy because because I don't have a problem doing 75 different things. And then, then I get to capitalize completely on it. Just gotta grab some gloves real quick. So a huge benefit to having all the livestock on the property is that they create manure and all that manure can be broken down into soil and it's really good for your plants and whatnot and if you look around there's not the greatest soil out here so i have to kind of work to make my own almost everything you see on top here is this is all pig manure and below it i have straw and then and then there's a lot of chicken manure i can actually see some right here and it's important to come in every now and then and you gotta stir this as hard as it might be. <laughs> so you gotta stir this and then, you know, keep it moist if you can and whatnot. And this will all decompose, break down. The 32 pots that are inside the geothermal are full of soil that I made. So I know roughly how much nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium is in it. Sometimes it's like, oh, I only had to really work for four hours that day. And I think someone else would see that and be like, envious but there's a lot of 16 hour days you know even if i'm sick as a dog well i got to come out and feed the animals every day no matter what they all need fed and watered and if, if something falls over and needs fixed it needs fixed period so the goat pen now used to be the outdoor garden you know i did successfully get corn and whatnot growing last season the plan had originally been hey we'll all get livestock in there i can amend the soil that way and then move them into another pen down the road and more successfully grow in here. I've got a male and a female boar goat. They're, they're known for meat. Uh, apparently I can get a little bit of milk out of Magdalene 
when she has kids, but I haven't, I don't really care. I'm, I don't really drink much dairy. That's not the, the plan really. But by having a male and a female, they will produce kids. That'll be a good source of meat for me. I've also got a male and a female pig. It's not the go-to pig for meat or, you know, necessarily, but I think it's just me out here. I think it'll be easier for me to harvest the animal. And honestly, I don't think that I'll have any problems with, you know, the quality of meat that I get from them. Don't just buy a pig like someone in the city buys a pig and processes it and throws it in the fridge and now it's done, it's way more profitable to get a male and a female pig that aren't related, let them breed, raise some of the kids, sell some of the kids, and then grow some of them for meat and continue to breed that male and female over a few years. We've got to get the pig pen over here set up. Um, they've done fine together, but from what I understand, it's it's best if I get her and the piglets separate over here so there's no problems. And uh, I had just started to build this. There's these, these posts that I slammed into the ground and obviously I've got to cut a little bit off on these. There you go. Pretty nice and smooth. So part of being frugal, living off grid and whatnot, something that I actually really enjoy doing anyway, but I would highly recommend it to anybody is you know, talk to people. You see a guy in town that has a huge pile of old scrap? Stop by, because his wife might love it if you got rid of that. I've gotten thousands and thousands of dollars in building supplies for free because people want to get rid of it. Almost everything I do, I just do it. I don't even want to YouTube it first before I do it. I just like to just go. So on the, on the geothermal, I've got to do a vent in the back and I have to do a uh, fan in the front for ventilation. I've got a PC fan, it's 12 volts, and I gotta build just a little box to go around it. And that fan is gonna pull the hottest air out of the pinnacle of the geothermal and blow it out the front. And it's a 12 volt for a reason, because I've got a little solar panel that'll run it just perfect, uh, or I could run into the other existing solar panel that's over there. It's all really just utilitarian for me. Like this box doesn't need to be really pretty, you know, and it doesn't have to last 30 years. It just needs to hold that fan in there, so. <laughs> 50 miles to the nearest town and something goes wrong. Well, I gotta take care of that. I've had situations like that, you know, you, cut your toe really good or something, you gotta bandage it up and disinfect it. There's no way you're going into, the, into town for that, you know? That way I'll have a space that I can attach it to the two by four in the geothermal and the fan will suck all that hot air out. It's almost daily that the homeostasis I create is just getting better and better. And, and I bet a lot of people wonder that, like, like, is he uncomfortable? Is it, you know, is he, feel like he's rough in it, but I've never been more comfortable. I, I, I have everything that I need right here. This is my van. <laughs> I've lived in this van for over two years and I've, and I've loved it. And I didn't start living in my van because I was broke. I was actually, uh, I was a warehouse manager for a produce company and I was making great money. I figure you could make 30K and live the way I live and it's almost like having the 100 grand. You're just as happy. And the truth is, if you, if you set it up right like I have, you don't need to pay a mortgage or a car payment. So I've got my website, of course, and, and somebody will put in an order. And because I have data, I just use the data basically from my cell phone. I use a mobile hotspot, and then I can go on and print the postage and whatnot. So that's what I did is I printed postage right here, and it's for a one red tea and one blue tea. The blue tea is butterfly pea flower, lavender, and lemon balm and the red tea is uh, hibiscus, uh, rose petals and lemon balm. This is what I'm just kind of sipping on. And the cool thing is, is as I drink this down, when it, once it gets almost to the bottom, I'll just top it off with water again. And both the red and blue tea, I'll get, you know, four or five servings out of each. A lot of people see that I have a cell phone or, or that I'm able to print postage off the internet and they're like, you're not off grid. But the, the definition of off grid and I go by the actual definition. It's simply not being connected to public electricity. That's the definition. There's no extras to it. <laughs> That's all it is, man. I'm actually over 50 miles from the nearest town, so it's about an hour's drive just to go to the post office and an hour back. 
So to keep customers happy three times a week, I drive to town. I'll usually be delivering 20 to 40 orders. And so I just gotta go, I gotta run out. That's a lot of gas money, but that's one of the costs. If I have to run into town to deliver orders, I'll do that. And otherwise I'm on the homestead uh, working on projects and it just, it just seems to never stop. You know, I, the company really took off and I started making good enough money. Like I probably make more money than people realize. And it's, it's pretty good, dude, like living in the middle of nowhere and then having everything you need, it's pretty cool. I've owned homes and condos and nice vehicles and I've made a lot of money. I've made really good money, but it just, the more money I made, the more stressed I was, the more poorly the boss treated me. And I was already looking for land. I was saving up money, but I had enough that I was like, hey, should I, should I just go do it or not? And I, I went for it. If I was to ever build a home, um, I've always planned on putting it over on this side. A lot of the wind comes from that side. Um, there's kind of a cliff that falls off like a huge wash and a lot of the wind comes up so I could have, you know, a home built in front of this, all these trees, which would be good blockage for me. You know, I'm discovering myself and how to be happy. And part of that is just understanding that you've already arrived. I think I'll just grow to be a better and happier person along the way and that's probably most important. I don't think that everybody's cut out to really try to build something that's actually sustainable. I think we're conditioned. You grow up your entire life and you're like, hey, I go to the corner to get food and water and, and if I need a shower, it's right here. And I think we've lost a lot of skills that the pioneers had when they came over. Ultimately, I wanna live in peace. I'm, I'm a really peaceful person. I just wanna mind my own business, do what I have to do and just grow old and enjoy it. I definitely enjoy my solitude. I like being... Ah. I like being out here away from all the noise. Before it's like, go, 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 go. And, and you can never even slow down to enjoy life when you're living in the city, trying to survive with a nine to five. I wanna slow down, create something that I can support myself with and enjoy life.